my worries mine. Damn right. Damn right. We got the blues. You're listening to Blues America. Blues America. Blues America. Big Pete Pearson singing his heart out on a possum up a tree. If you just turned this thing on, let me tell you what you're doing. You're listening to Blues America. I'm your host, Drew Vervis, and I'm hanging out with Big Pete Pearson, who's the featured guest on this week's show. Blues America is a little program from Arizona, broadcasting weekly and featuring your source for blues talk. More information is available at our website, bluesamerica.com, including playlists, the photo of the week, and the blues news. Contact the show at bluesamerica at gmail.com. And if you miss anything, that's okay. Just press rewind on our streaming two-hour media feed available online now. So, Pete, uh, uh, you were telling me about your blues roots, and it sounded like uh, despite some of the difficulties at the time, uh, you were having a lot of fun. Um, how much did you guys work, and uh, what parts of uh, Texas are we talking about? Yeah, uh, It was... It was the fun thing. So we worked sometimes four or five, five nights a week, you know, Odessa, Midland, uh, 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 Grovesback, uh, uh, all over uh, uh, West Texas, and some East Texas places, uh, Rockdale, Giddings, and all those little country towns in the east part of Texas and stuff like that, you know. We played Houston. And then we worked around Austin a lot, and a lot of the little joints on 11th Street, Rosewood, up on 12th Street. And after a few years of that, then I met uh, Blues by Hubbard, and, uh, and we got together, and we worked together a long time at Charlie's Playhouse. We played together 12, 13 years, I guess. I don't know. It was a, f- a full lifetime of music in that era. I'm going to buy this stuff out of Wanna bar. Hey, hey, hey. Buy- so if you started this journey at nine years old, you couldn't have been Big Pete back then. So would they call you then? And when did you start being called Big Pete? Well, you know, when I was real young, I was a pretty heavy set kid. And then when I got into high school, I got kind of bigger and uh, I played football a little bit. And I had some weight on, but then I started playing music a little bit more, and uh, I started losing some of the weight. And I was, I got, I lost some of the weight, and uh, but uh, uh, there was a few things that started that Big Pete thing. We won't get into that. <laughs> it was a pretty fun trip get, get, getting that title, Big Pete, and it was, it was uh, something else between the football guys and myself. Well, I went hard sometimes. And I say, what the heck? Blues America. 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 Now that's some home cooking. More blues on our Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> oh, look at all of that fish. Whose is this, man? I just, I don't want a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me tell you about it, though, man. Listen to me. I'm going down to the river. Got my pole in my hand. Going down to the river, baby. Got my pole. 
When did you first become a band leader? I first became a band leader when I moved uh, out here. That was in the late 70s, early 70s. And uh, it was the Blue Seville's. That was my first band here, the Blue Seville. God, I guess we was together for 15, 20 years, give or take a year. It wasn't planned for me to come to Arizona. My brother-in-law, he was moving out here, and he asked me what I had him move. And I said, sure. And uh, I came out with him, and, uh, and I was going to help him move out here and get his family here, and we did. He said, why don't you stick around, man, and uh, maybe you can find your place and and I married at a young age, and uh, he said, then you can go back and get your wife and bring your kids out here. I had a boy and a girl at the time, and uh, you might find something you like. And so I did, you know, I helped him move, and uh, I got a job working at the Sky Harbor Airport. I, I was uh, an assistant chef cooking there, and uh, uh and I asked him, I said, where's the music at around here? He said, man, I don't know. He said, but my brother-in-law know. Uh, we married two sisters at the time. And he said, my brother-in-law know what. And so they took me up on uh, uh, 17th Street and Washington, or Jackson, rather. I take it back. Yeah, it was 17th of Jackson, the VFW. And that's where I got to meet some of the musicians. And then, you know, I sit in on Monday. Every night was Monday Night Jam. So I, I, I started hanging out around there, and I met up with a bunch of musicians, and we started working. And I started working with them a little bit here and there. And I was, it, it just, things just happen, you know. You know, you get with uh, some musicians, and you get to meet somebody. And next thing you know, you're working with somebody, you know. And that's the way I got started here. And uh, my first good gig was out in Scottsdale with Duke Draper. He introduced me to a place out there, and uh, I worked at that with him. And that went over good. And a few years later, uh, uh, I worked with uh, Driving Wheel. And that was, um, I think it was uh, Susan Sue, Sue Tosh's band. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I worked with them a few years. I didn't work with them very long. And after I got away from them, I said, well, I think I'm going to put together my own band. And I, that's when I put together the Blue Seville. We were talking about some of the people in your family that are musicians, Pete. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, one name comes up. Um, W.C. Clark is a blues recording artist, guitarist out of yes. Texas. That's pretty popular. And yeah. uh, you're related to him. Yeah, he's my he's my second cousin. We call we call each other first cousin, you know, because uh, uh, he was a few years younger than me, and uh, he used to come to where I play all the time. He said, "You got to teach me how to, how you do that," and, and he would come and he'd hang around in the back because he he was too young really to be in there. But we let him sit in the back and he'd pay attention. And when I get a break or something, I'd go back and we. Show him a few licks here and there and until he learned. And he, it didn't take him long to learn either. He picked it right up, man. And he bloomed from there. He became a good guitarist and a bass player. He did real good. He was doing real good for a long time. And uh, he had a little bad luck in uh, traveling and going on. He lost some, uh, some of his musicians and his wife in a car crash. And uh, he kind of slowed down from that. But other than that, man, he was really kicking heavy for a while. And then uh, I think that just kind of took the life out of him. Yeah. I'm a real hairy man. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, I'm alive. Oh, baby, don't you know what I need? Come on, when I get cut. Wait a minute, Big Mama. <laughs> Blues America will be right back. More with the star of the show, Big P. Pearson, also known as L.P. Pearson, after a short break. But first, the blues break, big number one, with John Primer featuring the guitar playing of Bob Margolin on Eyes Be Troubled from the new tribute to Muddy Waters. <laughs> Blues break. Blues 
Rules Break. Big number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Wherever I feel tomorrow, like I feel today, I'm going to pack my suitcase and make my getaway. Lord, I am trouble. I'm in all world of mine. And I've never been satisfied And I just can't keep from crying Yeah, I know my little baby She gon' jump and shout That old train be late, girl Man, I come walking out Lord, I'll be trouble I'll be all good with mine Yeah, I've never been satisfied And I just can't keep from crying Yeah, I know somebody who been talking to you I don't need no telling, girl Cause I watch the way you do And I be trouble I be all good with mine Yeah, I am never be And I just can't keep on crying Supported by the Southwest Musical Arts Foundation. The following message is brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed, as our nation is, with abundant physical resources, and inspired as it should be, with the high purpose to make those resources and opportunities available, For the enjoyment of all, we approach this problem of re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Your stuff can be a resource for change. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at goodwill.org. Hi there, this is B.B. King. Hello, this is Jerry Lawson. This is Harold Winley once again from the Ink Spot. Hey y'all, this is Dave Riley. Hi, this is Kelly Joe Phelps. I'm Earl. And I am Arch. This is Big Pete. Why, hi there, this is Ruth Brown. This is Missy Anderson. Howdy, this is J.J. Gray of Mofro. This is Chico June, the blues man. Hey, this is Ben Harper here. I'm blues artist Paris James. Hello, friends. This is Robert Dan Hart. Okay, I'm Willie Buck, and you listen to Blues America. Blues America. Blues America. Right now. Blues America with my man, Drew. <laughs> 
Blues America. Blues America. I got it.